And here they are, as mentioned, Federico really focusing on these Necrovalli combos. Uh, while Christopher is playing a quite standard build, uh, but he's maxing out on Ishizu. I think he's the first player we see with 12 in the main deck. Yeah. Which makes his orange uh, Herald of the Orange Light much, much uh, better. But let's see now, the pressure is on Federico. He needs to put up his pendulum combos going. And they both know what each other is playing, which again helps out significantly. So let's see if Federico opened up a decent end. He starts things off with the Maiden, which is probably the best card in the deck. An incredible, incredible pendulum monsters that allows you to search right away for another one and also for a field spell which yeah. is how you get to eventually the Necrovalli. Yeah, I think this is the main reason why Federico decided to play this deck. Yeah. I think also another reason being is that uh, not all of the players could be familiar with this deck. Absolutely not. Uh, and uh, he knows it really well uh, because uh, <laughs> he lost in the finals to Dinka Bui playing Prank Kids and he lost in top eight at Euros this year to Rika yeah. by Marcus. So he knows uh, how playing decks that are a little bit less known uh, can really push uh, uh, the advantage. And now, as Christopher uh, will uh, get some explaining from the effects, uh, Federico uh, is going to have a pretty good opening, I would say, here. Yeah. Here we see one of the only older ones, uh, we could say, which is the Luster. So, great opening here. And the deck, by the way, is actually quite complicated. There are a lot of different combos uh, that are possible. Okay, this is a really good end, because this is an extender. They are all obviously uh, through the... Uh, through Draco inspired by, we could say, so the Ignis Maiden, uh, of course, and Danomite, but uh, they are really strong because they all represent an extender, and here we could see the Necro Valley, if possible. I think uh, it is really what we should be going for. Necro Valley, just a strong, strong card uh, against this matchup, and here we see it, uh, Necro Valley being added by Federico, and already Christopher is in big trouble because he's playing only one out uh, pretty much uh, in the main deck, uh, which is the single copy of Artbeat. Uh, and even in the side deck, that's his only out to Mystic Mine, yeah. which, by the way, Federico is maining three copies. <laughs> Just so, in case. <laughs> yeah. And here you see one other, another part of the engine, uh, Federico giving up uh, on one of his bestials, uh, they are extremely good in this deck because uh, you can add uh, the Luster Pendulum as it is a Dragon Monster. So it's not just uh, the Druid Swarm that you get, but even an Extender. So it's actually pretty nice. And here, of course, we are going to see one of the best cards in the extra deck, which is the Ignister. It's, yeah. I think, the only shoe off in the extra deck alongside the Beyond. And uh, the fact that this car doesn't have a once per turn is crazy. Oh, this is crazy, but especially I think like uh, in this current format you can also abuse of the fact that most of the players are usually going for Abyss Dweller uh, yeah. as a first turn card and, and then basically, you know, with pendulums, yeah. it's completely useless. And even the bestials, uh, the, yeah. there are two reasons why they are really bad against the pendulums and it is one, that most of the cards are not uh, light or dark, and uh, dark in general, so you cannot really eat them. And the other ones is also that you can just set up the Necro Valley, and then they are shut off from that as well. So, And uh, I also think it's important mentioning that, uh, as you said, as this case, Christopher plays only, you know, uh, one copy of Arcbeat, yeah. because like most of the current players don't even play, you know, cards that such as Twin Twisters. Absolutely. Like to get rid of but these here cars. we see Ooh. an interaction okay. from Christopher, which is the Kelbeck, at least the only other form of interruption he plays alongside the orange. So he gets it. It is kind of annoying, but let's see if Federico is shut down significantly by this. Uh, I would be surprised uh, if he didn't take into consideration. And yeah, he, as you can see here, not gonna be too impactful. He can go right away for another copy of Ignister and then the Beyond the Pendulum, which is uh, such a strong card. Uh, 
it's obviously not quite Electromite, yeah. but we can say it's almost as good. And the deck still, uh, I mean, does a lot of things, especially because like with the new Pendulum cars, uh, the deck is insane, honestly. Like... Yeah, and as mentioned, the Ignister comes back uh, because it's not once per turn. So another reason why you can use it with the new Odd Dice card that is in the graveyard at the moment from Federico, uh, it's that you can just get it back and uh, not a single effect is once per turn. So that's huge. How many cars are this powerful and not once per turn in yeah. Yu-Gi-Oh? And here we see the beyond, uh, no response from Christopher. We get to see another 1,200 life points paid by Federico. And this is important to keep in mind if we ever go next to the time. Uh, we know a lot of decks that, of course, have cars uh, uh, like Scattershot uh, or uh, Red Resonator. But in this case, for Federico, he really wants to play as fast as possible because, as you saw, Usually you pay 1700 going first every single time, so it's tough to set up uh, uh, and play when time is close by, so... Yeah, they are just uh, setting up the situation, clarifying the combos, nothing uh, too out of the blue. And as we can see here, Federico will be able to add a card. He has a lot of options. The cool thing about Beyond is that if you get the monkey board, which is what we are seeing here, uh, the scale effect is actually negated by Beyond, which means that it doesn't matter if you have a performable, it will be scale 1. So you can Pendulum Summon and then it goes back to its effect, which means you even gain the effect to add the Joker or the Odd Dice, which is a really nice combo that we might see here uh, that uh, Federico came up with, which I think was really brilliant, uh, which essentially involves going for Serene, Celine, and then you special summon the Odd Eyes uh, Synchron uh, from the end, because it's a spellcaster. And then, uh, with the effect uh, you can get from uh, the monkey board from the scale, and I think that's uh, really strong. And yeah, now, as expected, uh, we get to see an XYZ right away. Yeah, just clarifying his plays to the judges and uh, yeah, he's going to be able to continue right away with Majester Paladin, which is such a great card. Not only does it get you a special summon, but it gets to add a card. And usually what you do is in the end phase, you get the Eccentric. And the Eccentric is an out to Mystic Mine, which I think is uh, really, really good here by Federico. I mean, the callback really didn't hurt at all, um, especially because, like, he had the other luster. And then with the Negro Valley, he was really putting pressure on Christopher. And now, as you mentioned, uh, we get to see the Odd Dice Synchron that Federico revealed uh, to Christopher. Maybe we will soon see him in action. And yeah, here we see, as mentioned, the Magister Paladin being used. And Necrovalli finally coming down from Federico. This is a lot for the uh, Christopher to deal with. Uh, but he is going to chain, I think, Magna. Yeah.
And here is the combo I was talking about. When you get to the Celine, you're now able to special summon from the end the odd dice you get, the performable you get with the monkey. And yeah, and while they clarify once again the situation, I would say to go back to us uh, real quick. So once again, uh, just uh, going through some of uh, the plays, uh, they want to make sure, as uh, we mentioned, uh, the deck is not the most straightforward one. Uh, you may tend to forget some uh, effects or activations. In this case, they want to go through the Ignister line uh, and whether it summoned uh, a monster that was later synchro summoned with. Uh, I honestly don't think it would matter too much because uh, even if that was the case uh, and I do not recall it at the moment uh, uh, basically uh, it would mean that after the Kelbeck resolve you just go straight up for a uh, beyond yeah so basically the main difference is that there is one less monster in the extra deck which uh, uh, as we know unfortunately or maybe luckily for everyone pendulums are not able to be special summoned uh, <laughs> if not under a link monster or in the extra monster zone so uh, it doesn't really matter if there is one more or not uh, so at this point uh, i feel like uh, they will be able to check uh, things out but as i was saying uh, right now the combo is pretty much looking like uh, the uh, ideal one which i'm really looking forward to because uh, as you would expect, maybe a field uh, with, uh, I don't know, Apollosa or a Dweller. Uh, we will get to see, if we, we get the chance to, one of the other new cars uh, to combo through, which is the Zelantis. Yeah. And I'm uh, really <laughs> curious to see that in action. It reminds me a lot of uh, uh, Return from the Different Dimension, a card uh, that, again, uh, throws us back to 10 years ago, especially in Dragon Ruler format. But that would be uh, really a good way to uh, basically go into the combo because the ideal ending board is uh, uh, Baron and then you have the Necro Valley down. And this is essentially uh, the play you go for with the Eurotic Seal because then you essentially can tribute the Eurotic Sphere. You get the one copy of Amorphage Goliath from the deck, so you shut down your opponent from the extra deck. And uh, yeah, with Necro Valley alone, we already know that just Necro Valley is enough, yeah, enough. for the tier deck. Uh, it is as easy as that. So, but I think Federico strategies is very powerful because uh, most of the players basically relied on the Ishizu Tierman's deck, mm -hmm. and by putting up this strategy, basically either uh, like they don't really know how to play against pendulums, I would say, and then the Necro Valley, I think it's super annoying, honestly. Yeah. Because like if you don't play any out in your main deck, basically you're forced to go into game two, mm -hmm. and then even going into game two, like it's not really easy to, to to face you know pendulums in this format because like they have so many plays, and I really like that Federico is smashing them with bestials as well. Absolutely, why not? You know, there's yeah, also yeah. Because the this, the thing is essentially all you need to go is to get uh, to the uh, beyond. And while Electromite uh, might be a slightly weaker, like depending on compared to it, the good thing is that you don't need two pendulums. So if you play Fenrir, for example, which is a key card in Federico's deck, you're able to go for it. But it seems like we have now gone back to the point where the discussion was, so we can jump right back to the table for our duelist to end this game one. So essentially, we just uh, went back a couple of plays, uh, which was, as I mentioned, the reason is that uh, once the Kelbeck resolves, 
and put back the Ignister. Uh, you cannot synchro summon with the monster that was summoned uh, uh, from the Ignister. So uh, this is the only restriction that this card has. Which means that in this pot, Federico went for another Ignister, while uh, uh, he's probably going to be forced to go into the beyond, I would say. Yeah. Uh, as mentioned, uh, maybe it doesn't change all that much, uh, but of course, uh, uh, it, it let's be glad that we could catch it. So as mentioned here, it's what's going to happen. Yeah. yeah. As, uh, uh, yeah, as we were saying, uh, beyond uh, comes down uh, and uh, the play will pretty much look the same as before. Yeah, yeah, it's going to pass through the... I mean, does it really change much? No, uh, it doesn't. It really doesn't. And yeah, here it's pretty much the same as what we were witnessing before. As mentioned, the only difference is literally one more pendulum in the extra deck. So uh, the situation will be once again the same as before. In the end phase, we get to add one pendulum from deck, which sometimes will be the Arsifin Eccentric. But now the idea is all to get to the one copy of Performable odd eyes so and here we will soon see the necro valley being activated yeah once again i think uh, we're gonna get uh, his opponent to chain the one bestial this is what happened then federico gets to activate the draco slayer yeah blaster comes back we are pretty much it's as yeah. I mentioned, it's exactly the same thing. The only difference is one pendulum in the extra deck, which uh, uh, doesn't make uh, any difference because you cannot summon it. So now we get to see the combo I was talking about. You go for Celine, you get free because you have a field spell plus two scale, so you can summon the one you will now add with the monkey board, and then the odd eye synchron special summons the monkey board, negates its effect, and you can go into one of the really cool cards in the extra deck from Federico, which is uh, Tilting and Trainment, <laughs> which is already a pun by itself, I guess. And yeah, as expected, uh, this is the Tilting and Trainment. Uh, maybe I know the combo a little too well uh, for <laughs> my personal <laughs> admittance, but yeah. Uh, this is what Federico was explaining to me, and this is how he access uh, consistently Baron, which, uh, honestly, you gotta give kudos to him. Uh, it's yeah. uh, not that uh, easy to come up with. Yeah, very good stuff. Because now with the Baron on, on, the, on the field and the Necro Valley, uh, this is getting very difficult from Christopher. He would really need to find a way uh, to deal with the Baron and then uh, summoning the Zeus, uh, which is, uh, I think, the only way to get rid of the Necro Valley apart from the Heartbeat. Um, Still, Federico now activates the Gnister. Yep. To shuffle back. Thinking about uh, which one he wants to put back. Uh, and here it comes, the Zelantis. Yeah. And yeah, here is the Zelantis. Uh, we haven't really seen this combo yet in action, uh, but it is exactly why the reason. So uh, I think uh, Christopher, uh, yeah, pretty much okay with whatever is going on at the moment. Uh, and here you can see the Zelantis combo go through. Really interesting stuff.
Essentially, what we were saying is whenever the Zelantis is summoned, it's basically a return. What it does is it banishes all monsters on the field and then special summon as many as possible that were banished by this effect. So it uh, uh, resets uh, the Ignister and it gets rid of, uh, uh, of them. So really, really strong. He also would <laughs> puts up the erratic seal, just another sort of interruption. Impressive stuff from Federico. Yeah. Now it's got very difficult because uh, Christopher needs to deal with the Baron first yep. and then with the Necrovalli, but also there's the Heretic Seal. Yeah, I mean. and not only that, uh, there is uh, another card in the deck from Federico, which is the main target from this Heretic Seal, which is the Amorphage Slot. Slot. So here is uh, the Slot, uh, which essentially shuts down the extra deck. Uh, Now, action is on Chris hands. Let's see if he finds somehow a way to deal with this impressive board by Federico. But, of course, yeah. uh, hey, Christopher picks up his cards. He knows this is an upfield battle and it is Federico winning super convincingly this game one and just one game away from being the winner of this match uh, what a uh, start already i mean uh, we quickly had uh, uh, just to fix uh, uh, a minor misstep uh, while doing the combo but as i mentioned because uh, i am pretty familiar with the deck uh, uh, the that really didn't make a difference at all, uh, even if we didn't catch it, because it was basically an extra monster in the pendulum zone where, in the actual zone where yeah, Christopher didn't, didn't was really obviously going to pick difference. up his cards. Yeah. Uh, and this is why uh, Federico decided to play this deck. Of course, now the difference will be what do you do if you lose the die roll? But the answer to that comes in a lot of different things. So, first of all, Federico is maining both three copies of Kashtira Fenrir and uh, four copies of the bestial monsters. Yeah. Alongside them, he has some important tools, which are uh, the uh, Mystic Minds, Talent, so that's already plenty, I think, in the main deck. And in the side deck, uh, there are some spies waiting for his opponent, which is Dimension Shifter. I don't think you see this coming if you play against Pendulum. I don't think you ever expect this uh, indeed, and... Uh I think, in general, I have to give credit to Federico, which looks, of course, more prepared than Christopher for this matchup. Yeah, I mean, as mentioned, Federico is bringing it specifically for this matchup, uh, and I'm sure he will try his best to just uh, come up with a shoe of victory. On the other hand, though, Christopher uh, will try to set up uh, as strong of a board as possible. Uh, and uh, he has some interesting cards in his side deck, uh, which seems to be all for going second because uh, there can be only one uh, uh, honestly doesn't seem that great i yeah. guess it could have some purpose but uh, it would surprise me as well if you put it in also because it's one of those cards where you usually know if you want to side it oh, in exactly so, yeah uh, so i don't know i still see a lot of advantage uh, to the italian player but 
we shouldn't underestimate Christopher. He's uh, really a strong, strong player, definitely on top of them, and definitely both the serving as uh, um, in the top 64. Yeah. So it's uh, at the same time uh, a shame that they have to uh, play against each other. But I mean, it's Yu-Gi-Oh, and uh, <laughs> someone uh, has to win the event. Uh, so without further ado, I think our duelists are almost ready. Let's not waste your time and let's go back to the table for game two. Here they are, so hands are getting ready. Let's see if Federico will pick up uh, maybe the shifter and we could have a very quick one or if it, Christopher will be able to set up a convincing field going first. I see two traps uh, and yeah. I might see that there can only, you know? I think I've seen it. Uh, so we see the start with the Mudora discarding the Kelbeck. Let's see these five mils, of course, uh, Federico contemplating. Ooh. And he has the shifter, wow! What an opening by Federico with shifter in pendulums. Wow. Ooh, oh, the, and the, the heartbeat. <laughs> the heartbeat, which is the only out to Mystic Mine in the deck for Christopher, is sent away. What an opening by Federico. <laughs> I didn't quite catch the meals from uh, Federico if there was any one off that important, but Artbeat is such a strong one to lose. This can be devastating for Christopher, actually. Yeah. Which he now sets one car, two cars, and. I am pretty sure that we see there can only set, but let's see if uh, it will be as useful as uh, he expects it to be. Federico picking up his cars. Uh, Obviously, quite comfortable with the situation. Uh, wow. We what say that. could the other... Oh, <laughs> wow. and he has the ferry as well. Wow. What a start by Federico. That's, uh, that's insane, yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's <laughs> my poopy <laughs> after all. I mean... My luck had to go somewhere. I feel sorry for Christopher. Yesterday, yeah. while I had the chance to interview him, uh, he was telling me, please, I don't want to play against, like, Negro <laughs> or something. And yeah, maybe, I mean, you, you, you just shouldn't I speak yeah. anymore at this point, man. I mean, you jinx everyone and everything. That's, that's just unbelievable. And by the way, there is still a friendly bet going on. Uh, and, <laughs> Basically, it's Alberto against uh, Ishizu Tier to find out how strong his powers are. But yeah, now we see Luster Pendulum coming down and Ignis from uh, Federico. Solid, solid start. Uh, here we see a little interaction which uh, some may not be familiar with. Uh, as Pendulums usually go to the extra deck, you might think they would ignore the shifter, but that's not the case, unfortunately. Uh, maybe it would have been a little too strong yeah. of an interaction, but... Like these, they are already good enough, and uh, the Ferrari is so strong because it deals with the Derken. And now we get to see again the effect being used. Uh, he gets to the Negro Valley once again, and what a start from uh, the Italian player. Wow. And uh, yeah. with the <laughs> this is a little, a little unfair from Federico. And with the art been, uh, art bit gone uh, from Christopher's side, uh, he must not be happy. <laughs> yeah, he gets rid of the Fenrir. But also here at this point, uh, there's really not much that Christopher can do. No, I mean, because this is a, also a simplified uh, uh, game state, uh, we can say, and uh, in this case, it's tough because Fenrir, I think it's a card that might not be the best at the moment against some matchups, but the more simplified the game state is, the more cash tiro cards are amazing, uh, and Fenrir is probably the best. Uh, uh, the problem is, as you mentioned, the Necro Valley is there, and most of all, yeah. Artbeat is gone. Yeah, exactly. And that's the only out that Christopher is playing in main or side deck. Uh, so honestly, I'm really worried if you're a fan of Christopher, uh, 
and uh, yeah, that's uh, that seems like it's a little bit too much for Christopher to fight back with. But the game is honestly not over yet. Uh, we have seen uh, some uh, out of the blue comebacks uh, in the past, and uh, you never know really. Maybe there are some side decks options and. Uh, as mentioned, uh, we are pretty sure with, there were two traps, but who? And this could actually get punished now by the trap uh, face down from Christopher. Because if it is there, Ken, uh, this actually could be not the best news from Federico. But let's see if that was the case. Uh, we get to see a battle face come down. Uh, Christopher uh, really thinking about it. I think the right one is the there, Ken, right? No, and the handshake comes down. Maybe we were wrong all along. And it was. But he picks up his cards. And it is Federico winning the match 2 and all. Congratulations to both. Let's go back to us for the post match discussion. What a match. And what a show of dominance by Federico, I gotta say. But to be fair, it was just. Uh, as Lauder, like Federico had everything, uh, both game one and game two. Like game one, uh, he showed us his combo, and I'm actually happy we got to see the full combo, because I think he's really creative. Uh, to be fair, I gotta be 100% honest, Federico also had some inspiration looking at some decks, uh, especially at uh, YCS uh, Minneapolis, uh, of a uh, few players losing in the bubble. But I mean, uh, it also, uh, requires your attention to notice those decks yeah. losing uh, and saying uh, what Federico told me basically was these guys uh, went uh, X3 and barely missed out on the top cut. If our event in Europe will be as it is, top 64, and I go X3, I might be guaranteed a spot in the top cut. And well, he's actually X1. Uh, X1, <laughs> so he's 7-1 and uh, he has a really good score. And he also made some significant changes to the deck, uh, which, uh, for example, the Dimension Shifter, I think, uh, caught a lot of people off guard this weekend, and is one of the reasons why Federico is X1. Yeah. No, I'm, uh, but I mean, the deck itself, I think, is very powerful, and yeah. on, on the other end, is very underestimated. For sure. And I think this is what Federico liked the most about this deck. He said, look, I don't want to play Jesus Tournaments. Of course, it's the best deck of the format. I yeah. want to find something else which is as powerful as this deck. For sure. I want to play my cards. If they want to make up his Dweller, sure, like, they can make it. But, like, if I sit at the table, mm -hmm. I have my winning chances. Yep. With Necro Validia, you can basically search. Like, you can search it. And I mean, you yeah, know? this is, uh, I think, uh, one of the themes which I come back often when we do YCS is, uh, which is, uh, Probably my favorite thing in Yu-Gi-Oh! is just the fact that if you're convinced about something, if you love a deck specifically, we have been proven time after time that you can make it. It's not just that if there is a Shizu Tierleman that is the best deck or considered the best deck by many that it's guaranteed to be winning. And just look at the past events. Uh, we have had uh, Joshua winning uh, with Runic Sprite, which sure was one of the best decks. Uh, but the previous events, uh, both in Europe and in the US, were won by Rika, Exo Sister, like a lot of these decks which you would never think uh, had the chance to make it all the way. And uh, I have heard already plenty of people uh, uh, come up to Federico, yeah. as he is one of the best players in Europe, uh, and be like, what are you doing? Are you actually playing <laughs> Pendulum? Are you mad? Uh, but this is working out for him. Yep. It's 7-1, super solid record. Uh, he's mashing it. And honestly, if any of you guys just watched, even uh, our crowd just watched this future match, and you are playing a Shizu tier, do you really want to play against Federico? I, I don't afraid. think so. I would be afraid of playing him, I tell you. Absolutely. <laughs> and if I had to give a tip, uh, which obviously doesn't, help that much but like my tip to Federico which was kind of an inside joke as well was uh, if you do bring pendulum and you're convinced with it please try and go 3-0 in the first rounds because you really need to you know just go matrix on yeah. uh, those uh, crazy decks uh, and uh, once you do that uh, if you manage to sneak in into the top 64 I can already place a bet now that the majority of the top will be tiers uh, yeah and then you are uh, not just, uh, you know, uh, one of the many players in the top cut. 
yeah. you have significant chances of winning the entire event, which I think is what Federico is interested in. We have mentioned it, both him and Christopher, stellar players, uh, stellar achievements, but missing that one single trophy, which I think is what they are aiming for. But again, I got to give uh, credit to Christopher as well. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, he's a, a really technical player, I would say. We sometimes distinguish among uh, the talent. There are, you know, deck builders. There are players who are more creative. I think Christopher is a technical player. He's really, really good at playing whatever deck you give him. Yeah. But to be fair, this match, he didn't play a single card. No, I mean, I, feel, <laughs> like, I really feel sorry yeah. for you, Chris. I mean, if you're watching this next time, we won't be talking about, you know, playing this against yeah, this kind of I'm matches. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You had to do the interview. <laughs> I promise you, Chris, next time if you have an interview, it will be with me and not with Alberto. We won't allow him near him. He will just get a restriction order or something from you or from anyone. But I guess we can make a lot of money if we start doing this business. <laughs> and like, if you don't want your deck to be, you know, nominated or by, me. by okay. Alberto, we, <laughs> we can me. figure that out. We can figure that out. Yeah. <laughs> but no, again, uh, congratulations to both, and he's still on yeah, a 6-2 record. So, of course, it's a hard beat, but then uh, keep your focus. I know you can do it. Uh, and guys, again, thank you for being with us. There is only one match remaining uh, here at day one of YCS Dortmund 2022. But without further ado, Ed is waiting with Federico, the winner of round eight. Let's go to the interview. Thank you, Marcello. Yes, I am here with Federico, who has just won round eight, our penultimate round here on the first day of YCS Dortmund. First off, a congratulations. Now, let's let's talk briefly about what happened in that game one. So it was to do with summoning a dynamite and then the Ignista prominence. You couldn't use it as synchro material and it sort of spiraled from there. Talk to us about that. So exactly what happened was that I summoned Ignister and used its effect to summon from the deck. And first I summoned Dynamite. But there is a restriction in Ignister which says the monster you summon off it, you cannot use it as a, um, as a synchro material. So um, the fact that he shuffled back the Cal uh, my Ignister with Kalbeck from his end, uh, I proceeded to normal summon the, the, the Luster Pendulum and go again in Ignister. But of course, it couldn't be used as a, as a synchro material. So it, it didn't matter at the end because I just went to beyond anyway and do the same combo once again. So yeah, that was just a little mistake we did there. We did, luckily, the judges were really, really um, careful to the game and be sure to spot it, the game, the mistake instantly. So it seemed like they fixed it quite easily. They just sort of rewound the game state a little bit and then they carried on. Yeah, exactly. That's what happened. Okay, and then let's talk about game two, because that was that was quite intense. So it was Shifter, then the Majesty Pegasus helped you get into Necro Valley, which locked them out, and then it was building that huge field and an OTK. So were you pretty confident that you had the win secured there? So, <laughs> like, when you see Shifter post side, you know, you're, you're just happy. But at the same time, like there are spots where you can actually uh, drop it on draw phase or standby phase to play around talent. But I'd rather keep in my hand because sometimes they don't have like Herald and Gamma are the most heavy cards right now to go against Shifter. And I'd rather take the risk to talent than just resolve, be sure to resolve Shifter, especially against Gamma. And when he started with Keldo discarding Kelbeck, I knew that two fairies were gone, so if he had Herald anyway, he must have had another fairy in the hand. And when he puts the monster on the field, he cannot game anymore. So that's part where his shifter is just insane, it's just game winning. But at the same time, like Pendulum has this strategy with um, Maiden, the Majesty, that you can just search and not pop anything. So you just get a free pluses and then go into Maiden, search Necro Valley. Then I, I drew um, Fenrir too, which was like game winning by itself. So yeah, I got, I got lucky, but th that's what the deck does basically. So It's Heart of the Cards, that's what it is. And congratulations again, because that was an amazing win. After that little hiccup, a very decisive second game that got you that win. So what score are you on now? Are you 6-1? I'm actually 7-1. Seven, 7-1. One. Seven. Seven, one. So one more for today and see you tomorrow, I guess. 
Absolutely, I hope so. Perhaps we'll be seeing you in the top cut. Congratulations again, Federico. An amazing game. Guys, don't go anywhere because we've got one final feature match of Saturday of YCS Dortmund coming your way as soon as we can get it to you.